let's move it along a little bit and see how this story starts to come together. One of the things that your consultant tells you, Mr. Glauber, is he tells you that one of the biggest problems in this little industry is that although the manufacturer says perfectly clearly, put kerosene in the heaters, top grade 1K kerosene, the fact is that when you go out to buy kerosene, you can buy all sorts of stuff. And the fact is, if you took it back and tested it, it might be number two, number three, who knows what. And what that means is that if you burn it in the space heater, you get a lot more emissions of noxious fumes, toxic kinds of fumes. Much more sulfur dioxide burns out of it. And if you happen to be an asthmatic or a pregnant woman or somebody with emphysema, you could be in serious trouble. You figure, all right, we'll test it out, test it out. And you hop in your car and you go down to the local station and you walk in, you say, hey, I'd like to buy some kerosene. And it's exactly the way he described it. There's the sign, crystal clear kerosene. And you get something and when you give it to your expert and he tests it, he says, hey, this is not top quality stuff. That sound like something that might wind up on the program? Mm -hmm. Yes. Am I hearing a mm-hmm from Mr. Hewitt? Sure. Of course. Sound pretty good, Mr. Wallace? Mm -hmm. Mr. Rivera, you like it? Yes. I'm doing pretty good so far. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We haven't asked Koloff. <laughs> Policy specifically permits it. <laughs> Is there anything in this little scene? I mean, so far, all you've done is you've done it by yourself. You didn't have a camera crew with you. Would you think of replicating the scene with a camera crew? Uh, presuming that research bore out that uh, it is a common problem that people cannot buy the high-grade quality kerosene they need, uh, I would certainly consider uh, doing the same thing with camera that I did without camera. How about after you've tested it and it turns out not to be the top grade stuff? Would you consider having Mr. Wallace walk back in at that point? Yes, sir. Mr. Wallace, you say to this person behind the counter, hey, I uh, bought this kerosene. Uh, uh, somebody else here somebody from else. Our, our program bought this kerosene here the day before yesterday and we've had it tested and uh, this is not top quality kerosene. It's not 1K, it's 2K. What do you say about that? Is that what you say? Probably. The fellow says, uh, hey, look, uh, I run a gas station. I buy kerosene. I sell it. Mm -hmm. Where do you go from there? Where did you get it? Are you aware of the difference between 1K and 2K? Do you know the potential dangers of using 2K in this kind of a kerosene heater? Are you aware of the fact of the fumes that can be emitted? Is it conceivable that this will explode? You, you try to find out how much the salesperson knows. Chances are the salesperson doesn't even know. You're going to put it to this person. Are you aware that what you're doing is seriously endangering people? A prob yeah, that's a pretty good question. That's the way you're going to educate the public. Through your questions, you're going to give the public the information about what the risks are of selling this lower grade stuff. Through the questions and the answers, yes. What you're saying is buyer beware. Does it bother you at all that this guy that you're asking the question of is now a pariah in his community? Oh, I, he, he may or may not be a pariah. Chances are he's no pariah. Chances are that he's simply a fellow doing a job, being paid, and goes home at night. I, and is yeah, you maybe done... unaware of the fact that the 2K is potentially more yes, dangerous yes, yes, than the yes, 1K. Yes, yes, yes. But if you've done your job well, you've really had that fellow squirming a little bit, haven't you? You're not really concerned about whether he is going to squirm or, or not squirm. 
What you're trying to do is to find out some information because there's a good many people, hundreds of people, who are not going to squirm, but who, who can conceivably can get quite ill or conceivably can die if they're buying the wrong kind of kerosene for this particular kerosene yes, heater. Uh, Mr. Wallace, what you want to do is you want to go have a one-on-one -on -one confrontation with another human being. That is, you want it to be people. You want it to be a person who is doing something bad and being called for it. And let's see what his response is. Isn't that right? Uh, uh, no, is the short answer. <laughs> no, is, is the short answer. To, to suggest that we are not interested in telling in microcosm a story about kerosene heaters and the use of various grades of kerosene, of course we're interested in telling the story. And we are saying to the public, watch it, watch it, because though it is cheaper, and though it is a space heater, there are dangers. Yes, look, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not for a moment suggesting that you're not interested in the broader picture and conveying it in the course of your 15 minutes. But what I am suggesting is that one of your ways of conveying is to humanize the problem Absolutely with a person-to-person -person confrontation. Mm -hmm. I mean, there it's going to be. You are going to say to this person, hey, you are doing something wrong. What do you say about it? Right? Yeah. It's a moment in which you understand quickly what the human factor is. You reach people very well that way in a very, I'm not afraid, not ashamed to use the word, in a very dramatic way to say, wait a minute. This fellow is, some, is selling something that is potentially dangerous. He doesn't understand that it's potentially dangerous. Poor fellow's doing a job, and it, it, and it reaches all kinds of people in a very effective way. Mr. Rather, how'd you feel the night after you interviewed that fellow in the meat locker? Showed him that stamp and watched him squirm and die in front of the camera. Finally, run away behind the meat and hide. Was that good? I thought we'd done a good job, yes. And you Took feel no joy in his discomfort, but I thought we'd done a good job. You say you took no joy in his discomfort? No. Did his discomfort bother you in any way? Yes, probably less in his case than some others, but anybody's personal discomfort bothers me. But I thought we'd done a good job on the story, and I called Steve Lover and told him that. Don't get me wrong, I thought it was a great story. I loved it. I tell you, I especially love the part where this guy was twisting and dying. <clears throat> I mean, you got him. You nailed him. No, sir. He got himself. I don't get people, I get stories. That man got himself. I didn't get him. Mr. Agee, you're the boss of this company. I sure don't want to be the head of Zuber Manufacturing Company. And, uh... Well, maybe somebody will bid you out. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I was going to say along that line, uh, <laughs> suspecting that uh, I might be in this role today, I, I decided that if I did get the opportunity to respond, that I would say that as the head of Zuber and finding myself in this particular situation, I think the first thing I would do would be to uh, go to my investment bankers and lawyers and see if we couldn't arrange a quick sale of this company to a conglomerate like United Technologies or Martin Marietta. 